This is the Black Information Network Daily Podcast, and I am your host, Ramses Ja. And sometimes the amount of stories that make their way to us means that we simply can't cover everything that comes our way. But from time to time, a story just stays with me, and I feel compelled to share it with you and give you my thoughts. And now, one more thing. Today, I want to talk to you about Harry Belafonte. Um, as you may know, he recently passed away. And that one hit a little different for me. So uh, it felt kind of um, important for me to honor our now ancestor in my own way. And as I was just kind of dedicating some thoughts to him and, you know, reading up on him, it occurred to me that there's a a little bit of a story there uh, in terms of his inspiration of me. And there might be a little bit more story to his life than you may know, because I certainly didn't. So, um, first we'll start off with how he inspired me. Um, there's a movie that came out some years back, uh, at, at least 10 years ago. I, I'd say it's probably closer to maybe 15 years ago. Um, and it was called the Black Power Mixtape. And, uh, this film, was a documentary that was the result of some unearthed footage that was shot by, I believe it might have been a Swedish or Finnish, you know, um, film crew. They traveled to the U.S. to document the civil rights movement and all of the um, uh, activities surrounding the Black Power movement. And it was never edited together and released. And so it just kind of sat on a shelf for some years. Uh, and then, um, as I mentioned, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, uh, it was found and then uh, turned into what they called the, the Black Power mixtape. And it had a lot of prominent uh, MCs and, and singers, uh, hence mixtape, um, that were chiming in with their thoughts. Um, I believe uh, Questlove was a part of it, um, Erica Badu, et cetera. So um, that kind of piqued my interest. And I, I still own the movie to this day. Um, and I watch it on road trips. I don't own a lot of movies that I keep on my laptops just because I'm a DJ. I got to keep music there, but that's definitely one of them. So I'll break it out every couple of years when I'm on a flight or, you know, something like that. Well, uh, this film introduced me to someone that I didn't know too much about, um, Stokely Carmichael. Um, now that sounds crazy because I'm familiar with Stokely, but at the time when I first saw the film, I was just like, wow, who is this guy? You know, you hear the name, you know, when you're in college, but if you don't get a book or if there's not a teacher that kind of takes you down that rabbit hole, it's, it's not up there with the Malcolm X's and the, and the Huey Newtons, uh, I, now I could see that it is, but you know, Angela Davis, I read her books and I, for some reason I just missed out on Stokely. I mean, I heard the name of course, but so this film really brought that character to life and I was grateful for that. Well, there is a scene in this film where Stokely was sitting with Harry Belafonte and you get a chance to hear Harry Belafonte speak in the film. So as I'm kind of being introduced to Stokely Carmichael, I'm putting two and two together that uh, Harry Belafonte was really in the middle of this. He was really there. You know, and of course, Harry Belafonte's name is a name that I know from Hollywood. I know of him as an, an actor, right? And it, it just, it you know, it's very easy for a person like that to get outshone by a Dr. King or a Malcolm X. Um, 
And so when we hear the, the stories of Dr. King every year, you know, Harry Belafonte is, you know, he was there, it's well documented and so forth, but his own individual contributions to that movement um, were never expressed to me. And it was at that point when I saw that he was really there. And now, of course, we know that. But that kind of endeared uh, him to me because here was a man who was, you know, at the height of his career uh, that was doing uh, amazing things. And he felt strongly for his people. And he used not only his financial resources, but he used his person, he used his voice, his platforms to uh, bring attention to the struggles uh, in the black community. And that was something that was very noble to me. And it was him, among others, I'll admit, but it was him uh, who kind of served as one of the folks who inspired me to put my people first in 2020. For those that don't know, I am a broadcaster. I'm a DJ and I, for many years in my city, hosted uh, a radio show, Afternoon Drive on the hip hop station. Okay. And in 2020 rolled around and everyone was in the streets protesting. I petitioned my station to um, allow us to put on a program that highlighted the voices in the streets that explained concepts and, you know, the whys behind the protests and so forth. And long story short, um, it's actually a really compelling story. You should check it out one day, but this is about Harry. So long story short, um, they said no. And uh, I put my people first. I resigned and set off to um, create the show uh, that I felt the people deserve, not just my people, but our allies and supporters. And um, that has grown like wildfire. So all's well that ends well, right? But um, Harry Belafonte having that courage um, and, and Harry Belafonte walking firmly in two worlds, contributing a, a not insignificant amount to both realms at the same time, never turning his back on his people. Uh, that's something that to me is exceptionally noble because who are you without your people i did i i i think that cowards turn their back on their people that's just how i'm made so i saluted harry belafonte and i recognized that um he was an inspiration so that got me to reflecting and reading about him. And so obviously I want to tell a bit about his story, but if you were like me some years back, I, there's a few things that I want you to know. So I did some reading today. Um, and I of course consulted with the black information network. So I'll read some of what we've written here, but I've also checked out you know, TMZ and I've been online, I've read, you know, Sean King's post and kind of compiled some of the things that really make Harry, Belaf Harry Belafonte more special than you may know. And that uh, will give you some insight into the enormity of the figure that we have lost and that has now become, again, our ancestor. And so I'll read. Uh, Legendary singer, actor, and activist Harry Belafonte has passed away at age 96. Belafonte died on Tuesday, April 5th at his home in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. The cause was congestive heart failure, as longtime spokesman Ken Sunshine said in a statement. Born in Harlem, New York City in 1927, Harold George Belafonte Jr. broke barriers in the entertainment industry while promoting civil rights for African Americans and Black people across the globe. In 1956, the Jamaican-American artist released his debut studio album, Calypso, which would go on to make history as the first LP by a single artist to, in a year, sell more than a million copies. Um, 
So here's some facts that I picked up. Um, Sean King mentioned that he was two years older than Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Just to kind of give you a framework there. Uh, and, and just so you know, he did, uh, march several times with Dr. King. They were, they were close. Um, he was, he was in the thick of it. So, uh, he was also friends with, uh, James Baldwin. Um, he helped organize the We Are the World record in 1985. That came out when I was just a baby, but at some point in your life, you've heard it. If not, Google it. It's a, it's it no matter when you were born it's an epic record and then the video really kind of helps sell it so so youtube it i should say all right um 70 years ago he was a platinum singer um the uh Deo record uh the banana boat song uh, he's won multiple grammy awards um i believe he was nominated for 11 grammys uh he had number one movies and he was doing all this stuff 70 years ago um in addition, he's a noteworthy stage actor. And as I mentioned, he gave the latter two thirds of his life to activism, freedom fighting, and mentoring young leaders. Uh, he marched on the front lines of the civil rights movement, as I mentioned, and uh, used his fame, influence, and resources to bring worldwide attention to the conden conditions of Jim Crow and bigotry in, the, in America in the 1960s. Uh, he fought for political prisoners including Nelson Mandela. He spent almost 20 years fighting apartheid in South Africa, and uh, he spent uh, 60 years fighting against mass incarceration and police brutality. So, um, fortunately, most of what I've read has kind of touched on a couple of those things, um, but none of what I've read and indeed, even what I've shared with you today is none of this is an exhaustive list of everything that there is to be said about Harry Belafonte. But I do believe that it gives just a bit more context than the pop up on your phone might suggest. Um, you know, legendary actor Harry Belafonte has passed away in 96. There's rather more to his story. And if you don't know, and if I have a microphone and an audience, then I feel it is important to share that with you because hopefully you might be just as inspired as I was. All right. So as always, if I missed out on anything, there's something you'd like to add or maybe just some thoughts, you can reach out to me on all social media. I'm at Ramses Jow, or of course, you can use the red microphone talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Peace. This has been a production of the Black Information Network. Today's show is produced by Chris Thompson. Have some thoughts you'd like to share? Use the red microphone talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. While you're there, be sure to hit subscribe and download all of our episodes. I am your host, Ramses Ja, on all social media. Join us tomorrow as we share our news with our voice from our perspective, right here on the Black Information Network Daily Podcast.